of a series we're running with agency directors on the big challenges facing our industry. Today we're joined by Cheryl Hersey of Action Group, a full service agency specializing in the health and wellness industry to discuss the relationship between creative and digital, the potential conflict, which comes first, and how to bring it all together. Cheryl, thanks for joining us. No problem. In my experience, most marketers tend to fall into one of two categories. Either they're focused on brand and the creative process or on digital and data. Where would you place yourself on that spectrum? Or do you think that's actually something of a false dichotomy? Yeah, I think broadly speaking, most marketers will favour one end of the spectrum or other. Um, and we're a full service agency and, and we work across a lot of disciplines. So I think it's probably my job to be au fait with all of them. I think luckily I'm then surrounded by expert teams who have their own particular specialism, which they know inside out and in far more depth th- than me. Um, I think to be at the top of your game as a marketer, you almost have to be kind of obsessive almost and and so by definition some of the best people are definitely at one end of the spectrum or other I think creatives also tend to dislike number crunches and vice versa but but both are essential to to true marketing success awesome so if we if we assume then so I think you just described that that you'd probably kind of put yourself as kind of spanning across both areas so I'm interested to, to to understand which you think comes first. So if both are important, and I understand obviously Action is a full service agency, um, do you need to first establish the creative vision and then let the digital people translate that into their world, their channels? Or do you need to first consider the digital implications and then work backward to design the right creative? I think it probably comes down to the brief. So you know, what is it that you're trying to achieve? And who are you trying to reach and how are you trying to reach them and and sort of answering all those questions first. And a good brief should almost make it clear where you're starting. So, you know, if we're talking about a a sort of above the line campaign, um, then yes, you would start with the creative. But really, that creative should be should be framed in a context of who are we reaching? How are we reaching them? How is that going to translate? And so. whilst you don't want to put too many constraints around that creative process, I think you do need to always be thinking within a context of where is it going to go? Who am I talking to? You know, what what resonates with that audience? Um, And obviously you can always refine those things once you have your your creative idea and your creative campaign in place. But it's much, much easier, I think, to sort of not get it completely wrong if if you always have that framework to work within. And so that's where I think it comes down to being really important that both ends of the spectrum kind of understand enough about the job of the person at the other end to appreciate um to you know, really appreciate you know the challenges that each each person has within their role and, and how you work together to create something really magical and do you think we're good at that as an industry do you think, do you think people who who are specialists at one end of the spectrum or the other do you think they are good at uh appreciating the challenges the opportunities at the other end of the spectrum or do you think we have a tendency to undervalue those disciplines that fall outside our own areas of expertise i think that probably comes down to company culture um you know within within really big sort of multinationals i think they have got it quite right but i think equally you know they have the the resources and the um you know the the budgets to be able to encourage collaboration and and you know have that sort of regular touch points within sort of interagency and um, in-house staff. But I think I, I think you know with with agencies there there is still a tendency to you know to fight really hard for for, for your piece of the pie. And then when you get it, there is a, sometimes a tendency to be, be like really protective of that. Um, yet it would obviously work better for everyone if agencies and in-house teams were able to collaborate to, to achieve those sort of best possible results. I know if we were, for example, if we were appointed to, to say, for example, generate a creative concept, we would actively seek intel and feedback from the people running the sales end to ensure our work was as good as it could be. Because ultimately, if your campaign succeeds, it's far more likely to, to lead to repeat business. So 
I think agencies should look on inter-agency collaboration as a really positive thing. Um, I think it happens in some cases and not so well in others. And then when it comes down to thinking about how well it works in-house, definitely comes down to, to the company culture and how well that, that collaborative process is in, instilled within the workforce. I've never really thought about this, but presumably it also it poses a question around what you actually call yourselves. Are you, are you, are you a digital agency? Are you a creative agency? I mean, I, I think often we use these terms interchangeably almost, don't we? What, out of interest, how, how do you describe yourselves? So where we are, you know, sort of wholly focused on on one industry. So we only work with um, fitness and wellness. Um, you know, we 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 went through a, a rebrand fairly recently, and that that was actually a real sort of um, interesting point for us. And you know, we see ourselves as a service provider to the fitness and wellness industry, and and a provider that really offers the broadest range of services for for fitness industry success. But it, 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 it is a hard thing to sort of pin down. And you, know, you have to really know as a business what your skill set is in order to, to communicate that to your customers. So it is worth sort of spending the time working, at, working out you know, who you are and, and who you are communicating with. Do you think there is ever a danger that with the immediacy and efficiency of digital and the sense of productivity that can give us, it can sometimes threaten to undermine the creative process? So something I see quite a lot with um, some of our clients is that there can be a real focus on executing too quickly. So they might say, you know, we, we need to sell more of this. So we need to run an advertising campaign or we need to send some email marketing out. And we need to do it right away when actually what they need to do is, is really pause and think about the message or the creative that sits behind that data driven or digital campaign that's going to resonate with people first because even a brilliantly executed digital campaign with a weak message probably won't convert just in the same way that an amazing creative with poor digital delivery won't work very well either and it it just goes to reinforce the importance of both ends of that spectrum um, being considered and ensure they're both working as well as they can to support each other to achieve those results that um, that they need. Obviously, a lot of this is, you know, in a perfect world, I guess you would have the kind of the full spectrum of of experts with somebody, as you say, spearheading that who has an appreciation for, for both ends of the spectrum and everything in between. However, very often, you know, resources are not infinite and priorities have to be uh, have to be made. If you were let's say, building a marketing function for a small brand and let's say you you at the outset, you could only afford, let's imagine, just one person. What skill set, and I appreciate this is going to be a little bit um, sector dependent, uh, business dependent, so, so bear with me, but, but what skill set, speaking generally, do you think that very first person should have if they were operating under you uh, in that marketing function? Mm-hmm. That's a really good question. Um, I think I would hire a really good writer ideally one who had an eye for detail (laughs) probably coupled with a healthy dose of common sense I think you can you don't even have to know a huge amount about your industry because that can be taught you can teach someone um you can teach someone about a, a, a market you can teach someone how to run a Facebook ad campaign for example you can rely on stock libraries to provide visuals but you can't teach um can't teach an adult to be a brilliant wordsmith in my experience they either are or they're not um words are required in pretty much every facet of marketing so if you have a good writer there'll be lots to keep them busy um so let's imagine then that you you have this astonishing uh, writer uh, but maybe they know you know a grand total of absolutely nothing about anything else what book or resource might you recommend they use to upskill themselves at both ends of that spectrum so if they were to read one book or uh, go to one resource for brand creative and then likewise for digital what might those those two books or resources at either end of the spectrum look like um this one's perhaps a little bit left field but i read a book called little wins the huge power of thinking like a toddler um it's by paul lindley who is the founder of ella's kitchen which is the, the successful baby food brand 
one, one, of the, one of the things he talks about is how your creativity diminishes as you grow up. Like children have free flowing, non-linear thinking. To a young child, anything is possible. But as adults, we constrain our own thinking by the rules and boundaries that we've learned to live in, which I think is really interesting. Um, and around the time I was reading it, my daughter had this like little cuddly lion and she, she wanted to put it, we've got this sort of indoor tree at home and she wanted to put the lion in the tree. Mummy, mummy, the lion, the lion should live in the tree. And I said, lions don't live in trees. And then because of the book, I thought, well, why not? Our lion can live in a tree if it wants to. Um, and that lion <laughs> has stayed in that tree ever since. And he reminds me to not be automatically dismissive of ideas. Um, and I think that is really, really interesting. We, you know, actually uh, to a child, anything is possible. And when you're creating a campaign, um, you shouldn't constrain that campaign or that the, the, the creative, the ideas behind it to, to what you've always thought, because you'll never really achieve kind of greatness. So that would be the book that, um, that I would recommend. And then from a digital resource perspective, I really like later.com. So it's um, later.com is a social media scheduling tool, um, but it has the most brilliant blog, which is constantly updated with like really extremely useful and actionable insight into running effective social campaigns. I think the people that, that write it are absolutely genius. They're always completely on the money. They're always totally up to speed. They've always, they're breaking the news before anyone else. And I think if you are kind of attuned to that and spend sort of even 10, 15 minutes on it each day, you, you can't go far wrong with your, your digital knowledge. They also have free courses and I think they run a digital summit called LaterCon, which is also free. So I, I'd highly recommend that as well. That is awesome. I, I was actually not, not aware of that. Um, so I have uh, made a little note and I will be uh, sharing that around the team in due course. That, that, does, sound, that does sound awesome. And, and I also love the fact that your daughter is already attuned to Elon Musk's first principle way of thinking, clearly destined for, for, for greatness. Final question then, is there, whether it relates to, to the subjects talked about today or otherwise, is there one particular mistake that you look back, I think I'm writing for an action have been going for what, 10, 10 years or so. Is there one particular mistake that you look back and think, God, I, I wish we had done that differently and it might have just accelerated our progress, um, whether it related to maybe a, maybe something on the digital side or something on the creative side. Is there anything that you look back and just think, I wish we had approached that a little bit differently? I think that, we, so as I've mentioned before, we rebranded this year. So Action PR became Action Group. Um, and the reason that we, we changed our name was because for about nine and a half of those 10 years, we've been offering services beyond PR. Um, you know, as I said before, we do everything from sort of advertising through to business consultancy, content creation, uh, we build websites and um, we spent a long time pitching for business, saying things like, well, we're called Action PR, but we don't just do PR. And it just got to the point where it was almost amusing um, because and I felt our name was really, really holding us back because people would say, well, you're a PR agency. How could you possibly build my website? Um, and it's changing the name has been phenomenal from the point of view of um, getting the recognition for the other services that we, we, we offer and have offered for you know, the best part of sort of eight, nine years. And I wish we'd done it sooner. I wish we'd done it five years ago. I think we could have easily, we had the creds, we had the work, we had the experience. We should have done it much, much sooner because actually if you weren't a client of action, you wouldn't have a clue of what we were able to offer. You know, our clients were great. And, and you know, what we've done with our clients is actually, they may have gone from, a, from being a PR client through to being a, a client that we do above the line advertising for or that we we deliver their social or whatever it might be and you know they have an awareness of what we can do but the wider industry still would see us first and foremost as a agency and of course we love PR and we're great at it and we know we don't want to we don't want to lose that but we are actually so much more than that so for me it's that it, it's it comes back to that question you you, know, you asked earlier about 
um, positioning and the services that, you know, the, how we position our agencies around the services that we offer. Um, and I think that's the classic example of how getting that wrong can really be a, a kind of a thorn in your side. Thanks so much, Cheryl. Enjoyed this a ton and really appreciate your time.